it's time to reveal my costume for Dragon Con this year. I have two months to get it done and I'm excited to share the build process with you. My new costume is from the video game Destiny, the most loyal, hardworking character in the entire game. Protocol broken. That's right, it's the broom bot. I like to call this particular model Sweepy. Looking at a full build like this can be really intimidating. I have to make a bunch of different armor pieces, make a crazy headpiece, and hopefully have time to do some cool voice modulation, and also add a bodysuit. In order to not be overwhelmed, I like to take my builds one small piece at a time. I take that small part and finish it so that it's wearable, and after that, I move on to the next piece. On that note, today we're going to be starting on the Broombot's feet. I purchased shoes on Amazon that have an elastic top. I plan on sewing Velcro attachments right onto the shoe, and this material should be pretty easy to sew through. I try to template my armor pieces with cardboard, cardstock paper, or even scraps of foam to get the shapes I need. 6mm craft foam, which is thinner than floor mats, is used for a lot of the build on these feet. I cut partway through the back of the toe piece, then, next to each cut, I cut partway through at a beveled angle. This removes a wedge of foam that acts as a hinge to bend your foam in either direction. To help form the toe shape, a dark gut cutout that will be glued together later. There's a recessed strip on the toe, so I cut that piece out of the foam and then used a scrap of thinner foam as a guide while I super glued all the pieces back together. I try to remember to test fit pieces as I go before investing too much time into something that may be the wrong size. Contact cement was brushed into the grooves. Super glue or hot glue also totally works for this method. But for those, you just want to glue one strip at a time and hold the hinge in place while the glue sets. For the contact cement, after it dries, tacking it together is an instant bond, whether you want it to be or not. The toe sides got designed with more scrap foam, making sure that the pieces wouldn't scrape against the ground while walking. A smaller retractable blade is easier for me to cut curved shapes in foam but I always end up cleaning up the shapes with a sanding drum on my rotary tool. There's some kind of rivet thing on the toe side, so I tried heating up my foam and using a sharpened PVC pipe to push the shape into the foam. I enhanced the cut with a knife and then reheated the foam, making sure to press the back of the rivet into the PVC pipe. I think that actually worked out pretty well. Super glue permanently attached the toe pieces together. I'm calling these robot toes good enough and moving on to the upper foot. After a couple paper template iterations, I got a shape I liked and traced the patterns onto more 6mm foam. For these angled cuts, I try to tip my blade up as I near a corner so I avoid cutting too far. Then I can rotate the piece around and cut the other side of the corner. These pieces are going to be inset into the foam. All of these edges are sharp angles, which I like to round over with a sandy drum on my rotary tool. This cleans up the edges and helps paint stay on the now curved corners. A heat gun is used to seal the foam as I go, which also removes any fuzzies from sanding. I used my template to trace a hinge line on these side pieces. Again, cutting partway through at 90 degrees and then carving out the foam at an angle. More of the CA glue is used for these indents. I made sure to wipe away all the escaped glue before it dried. These trenches can now be glued together. An extreme bevel was cut onto the top piece and a hinge on the back. With the added bevel, these two pieces glue together at a better angle. Conveniently, there is supposed to be a seam where these two pieces meet, so I made sure to leave a noticeable gap. 
With this six millimeter foam, I was worried about the thinner seams, so I reinforced everything with hot glue. Good old floor mats are perfect thickness for the next piece. The little foam insert is test fit and then cut to length. I try to take time to clean up all of my foam edges. You can see here that it totally makes a difference. The strip is glued and wiggled into place. Now it's time for another test fit and then moving on to the ankles. Excuse me, Guardian. I have the worst time coming up with cone-shaped patterns, but luckily there's websites that do the math for you. I'll link in the description the truncated cone template creator I used. All I had to do was enter the top and bottom diameters and the height. Then you print out the pattern. Heat forming the shape before gluing makes it easier to glue these seams together. The strip that goes around the cone is cut at an angle. That's because the foam thickness angles outward after being glued into this cone shape. The instant bond of contact cement is great when tacking curved shapes together. I left the strips extra long and then cut them to size once I reached the seam. I used the same template to guess at the curved shape that will go on top of my piece. Foam is pretty forgiving. I figured I'd just mash this piece onto the correct spot with some glue and it would look close enough. We have this cool curved X-Acto blade that seems to work well for sawing curved shapes. This doesn't need to be clean since the disc will be inset into the foam and the sides are going to be hidden. The top edge got fixed up anyway as I sanded in a chamfer. A generous amount of hot glue gave me some working time to fit these two pieces together. Now that these circles are done, I can permanently attach them to the foot tops. There needs to be a little more room for my ankle, so I cut away all the extra foam. Sliding the sanding drum down the bit on a rotary tool is a really cool way to add some circular details. It takes some practice and a slower speed setting, but it's really fun. On the back of the ankle, there's another armor piece that I templated in paper, then cut out of more foam. I think I've decided I like hot glue for gluing most of these hinge pieces together instead of contact cement or CA glue. I can hold the piece in the exact angle I want and add more hot glue to fill in the gap if I cut the angle too extreme. Cleaning almost complete, Guardian. I'm adding the shoe attachments before painting because I want to make sure everything fits and moves well. The hook and loop Velcro is really a pain to glue to other materials, so we like to sew on nylon webbing, which takes hot glue like a champ. The same goes for elastic. The elastic may stretch and peel away from hot glue, so nylon webbing gets sewed onto the elastic ends. I scored chunks of foam into a mesh pattern, which lets the hot glue seep into all the crevices. The nylon webbing gets smooshed around and held in place a few seconds as the glue cools. The hook side of the Velcro is sewn straight onto the shoes. Since the hooks are scratchy, I like to keep this side of the Velcro off the foam pieces when I can, since the foam will be all stacked together for travel and storage. I also like to add more hot glue to the edges of the nylon webbing. This helps prevent any peeling. The foam velcros to the shoe and the back elastic strap keeps the top piece in place and also will act as an attachment for the ankle bit. A strip of foam is glued onto the back for more velcro attachments. Some more elastic helps hold the other side of the velcro in place. Now all the foam pieces are attached! The elastic gives some ankle flexibility and the foam pieces are super secure and don't scrape into each other. But the only way to be sure is to wear them. It's really motivating to take one small part of a costume all the way to the wearable state. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this build gives you some insight into how I like to build my costumes. 
I've always loved the robot frame designs in Destiny and Sweepy holds a special place in my heart. I love all of her dialogue that you hear when you run through the tower, the holiday quest where you had to rescue her broom and then you kept it, and the little bits that have been shown about broom bots in Destiny 2, I just couldn't resist making this costume. I think it's going to be great to run into Guardian costumes at Dragon Con and just hang out with them for photo shoots. Also, if there's a costume that you want to try but you feel intimidated and don't know where to start, try taking just one piece at a time. Once you finish one part, there's nothing that beats the feeling of being like, I made that. I have until September to finish this costume, so look forward to some more Monday build videos. Also, I'll be live streaming some of the parts on our Twitch channel on Tuesdays at noon Pacific time. And if you're wondering where I learned all of these foam crafting techniques, well, I learned them from Bill's book. This book is full of great tips and techniques to bend EVA foam to your will and turn the pieces into armor. The print and digital ebook versions are available on our store at punishprops.com. I'm really excited to share the rest of this build with you, so I'm going to go get back to work, but I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching! If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind-the-scenes videos. Thanks again, and happy crafting!